Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Total disaster. Hi, and welcome to TFYLP, episode 352. So we are all here live at TFCon. Well, not all of us, but a fair amount of uh, the crew here. Uh, so with me today, uh, I've got myself, Lucas. We've got Peter. Christian. Hello. Paul. Anna. Hi. And Amber. Hello. So, and uh, Amber really dressed up for the, uh, <laughs> for the show today. So Fancy as always. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Should I feel underdressed now. Should yeah. we have your new dress code? We should all have to wear cosplay every week. <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> oh, we should. There you go. All right. Next weekend. Oh, no. We'll let you go. All right. Perfect. I got the, the big two of us can be covered. There uh, we go. The you got to come you. up with a good theme, though. Oh, shoot. That's difficult. <laughs> I believe so many costumes. <laughs> we'll find something. There you go. So, so I'm sure the audio this week is going to be fantastic because we have like one mic in the middle of everyone uh, that we're using to record here. So, uh, yeah. So if there's any audio issues, I, I apologize. So we'll have Paul clean it up in post, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Great. So, Sounds like a job for you. So, and then one of the fun things we actually did is uh, we actually had some cake here and uh, remnants of cake. Uh, because it was actually Anna's birthday uh, um, this weekend. Friday. Yay. Mm. Happy birthday, Anna. Yeah. Yay. So, yep. Happy birthday. So, yep. So, so we managed to get a, a cake from a, a local baker here. Um, so it was fantastic cake, and it was it was very good. So. It's awesome. Always yeah, so thank you to Christian. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Christian. I thought it was important that we have a birthday celebration, so we did. We did. We did. This entire com is like one big birthday present. Yeah, we managed yeah. to even get Transformers themed plates for yeah, the uh, for the birthday, so legit. it was great. It, it was totally legit. Your legit plates. We didn't keep them mint package though. No, we did not. No. We broke the ripped, seal. Ripped them right open. I yeah. have that set sealed. No, did. did we <laughs> cut the tape on them? Shall I say? <laughs> yes, it was a live unboxing only for the people in the room. Yeah, record it. You know. Put it up on Rick's show. That's right. Great. <laughs> there, there we go. We've got, we've got plenty of episodes now, you know, to, to do that. So we have, we actually have uh, a fair amount of stuff we've all gotten. We didn't bring it uh, here today. That would take um, way too long. Yeah. So we may have to do the highlights for Ouch My Wallet because otherwise that, you know, may end up being like a, you know, two hour show. Just a week long special, just an ongoing one person. The Ouch My Wallet <laughs> yeah. series. Yeah. The right. epic Ouch My Wallet miniseries. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be fun. So. It'll be Ouch My Weekend, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like every year that I go to TFCon, I say that I'm going to be good and I'm trying to stick to a budget and then you get here and, and yeah. I blame me this year. You did a decent job until I helped you. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Peer so pressure is real. I was under budget. I was doing so well. And then Anna, like, messages me. I'm, I'm in a panel and uh, watching a panel. And she's like, hey, there's a Grand Galvatron here in Unite Warriors, which is one of the figures that I was looking for. She had talked the guy down, negotiated the price, and I, so I ended up, I had to get it. So oh, she did all the legwork. You had to get yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can't just go I through that I never negotiate prices either, <laughs> but I knew the price she wanted, so I had to try to get it there. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I, I was a little disappointed that I, you know, had to go over budget, but it was for a wonderful thing, so. He even took some of my budget to do it. Yeah. He did, he did. Oh, no. So, Directly. So, do you own some of that toy now? I guess. So, yeah, no, I, originally, <laughs> uh, uh, before, before we started, I actually, uh, Christian's, uh, TFCon Hall actually was from me. Yeah. Uh, I had sold him a lot of stuff, as I tend to do, I like to sell you know, you know, buy things and sell things. So I bought a lot. I basically pre-ordered my TFCon haul from Lucas. It was cool. 
<sighs> My first treasure was from you too, so. So there, there you go. And you're, so, you're the supplier. Yeah, it's like you had a booth, but you didn't actually have a booth. So, and then I had to turn around and you know buy some things for Paul, and the cycle continues. Yep. You know what? You probably actually sold more than some people sold this weekend oh, pre-selling oh, yeah. Christian. I, I might have. Yeah, <laughs> twelve hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Jeez. yeah. So that's actually and it's pure profit because you didn't even pay for a table. Wow. Look at true. that! Look at so, that! You well, well, I wouldn't consider it profits. You know, selling, <laughs> selling, reselling things at, at you know pennies on the dollar is not really profit. Yeah, you maybe made a, you made a dollar <laughs> true, so far, true, true. <laughs> and you had to cram all my stuff on the wagon train from Kansas. That is true, and Anna had to put up with it because uh, it, the box managed to like you know fall down and hit her. I don't know, like twenty times. So. I was being beaten with. Toys. Christian's box You're the welcome. entire way up here. It was great. Oh no. It was great. We only traveled 16 hours to get here, too. So it was well, it was like, technically longer than like that. 22. Yeah. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, we, we took a, a minivan that we stuffed completely full of toys. And so we were just sitting there amongst the toys. So, but luckily on the way back, there's a lot fewer toys um, because Aaron did very well. So, yes. Good. That, that is true. That is true. Yeah. So what should we talk about on this special episode? Actually, I want to bring up really quick, Paul, you've Thank got you. something in your pocket that I'm wondering if we can get a closer look at. Thank you. Um, yeah, I found this on the floor. Found it on the floor? Yeah. Wow. Very cool. What is that? Wow. That's, that's somebody, so, somebody. It's a cliff jumper. Wow, that's a nice cliff jumper figure. Yeah. So, somebody here managed to have this. So there was, there was several vendors, I guess, that just somehow had a a magical bumblebee that just yeah. happened to appear, you know, out of, out of the blue. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's strange. Well, I mean, that wouldn't you true. think, you, if you're going to find it somewhere, you're going to find it at TFCon. Yep. That is true. You know? That's that is mysterious. True. You're not going to find it at Masters of the Universe Con or something. That would be weird. <laughs> so, yeah. So, he can be a little, you know, mascot here. So Perfect. But, uh, yeah. So time. you came from yeah. a long ways away, right? <laughs> yeah, San Probably Diego, yeah. It's, uh, I think it was like a 12-hour journey by the time, because I had like a four-hour layover in uh, San Francisco, Ooh. which is annoying. If I just fly direct, it's like five and a half hours. But then it's like, no, we're going to like delay you forever. Okay, great. But yeah, the flight was okay. Was it worth the trip, you think? Absolutely. Okay. It's great to be back. <laughs> This is my first Transformers convention in seven years. So. Oh wow! Wow, it's welcome exciting. back. Well, you did it. You did it good. Yes. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. I feel like that you really, you know, did a, did a wonderful job. Can you like put your wings on and show your sure. off your costume? I mean, this is. Oops. Oh, there I get them. I'm gonna smack in in the face. Oh, that's fine. I moved back. Oh, that's yeah, <laughs> that that is awesome. But I I am wandering around the trine. We've been out all day. And I had to ditch them to come here. <laughs> yeah, there's been, I mean, the cosplay at these shows is just incredible. Uh, it know. ups itself every year, it does. from what I've understood. Yeah, it's yeah. becoming a real big part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I mean, that's part of it. I know there was, a, someone made a Ravage that was a prop uh -huh. to go with it, too. Oh, and saw, yeah. Geek. It was life-size. Really nice. It was... He's so pretty. Didn't see those. Yeah. It's cool. It was huge. Like, big. five like feet it was, long, it was, and, like... It was like the size of like a big. pretty big dog. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, yeah. So that that was definitely a fun part of it. Has anyone made like a rat like a ravage costume for pets? You know, like for Halloween for pets? No, I saw. Yes, I've seen a few. You know, like a battle yeah. cat sort mm -hmm. of. I, I mean, mostly it's just like it's just one. like cool. the that's cool. I guess missiles yeah. that are like on the size of the of yeah. a, a ravage mm. and then. Like maybe something on the collar, so it's not much, but I've, I've seen a couple. That would be cool. Sounds like a good dog costume for this yeah. year. True. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. We got like what four days before Halloween? Yeah, three, I'm two. calling up China and I'm getting this made right now on the way right home. Now. So, Just gonna... can you get like a ravaged cat costume? I think I'm gonna Christian do it. I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did your cat arrive? Yeah, my cat's here now. Cool. Well, not here, here. Well, but, yeah, but you know, like I, I have, I have a cat now. Cool. So yeah. So there you go. You I'm going to be part of that club, too. Cool. So. Welcome. There we are. I'll make my cat be uh, Ravage is good or Panthor. That might be fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. My dog is white, so he'll have to be Shattered Glass Ravage. Mm. I love him. He's, He's waving. Perfect. Such a good one. He'll wave. 
So, was there anything at the show that you guys saw that you were not expecting? 15 yeah. breakdowns. 15 Generation 2 carded breakdowns, all priced 500 to $700 at one table. It was yeah. that was, wild. was that at Transformer Land? It was. Yeah. So they also had a huge display there showing off nothing um, but of jet fires. Fires. Yeah, that's crazy. That was that was nuts. I've just seen that they before. Also, that's where the jet. Oh, fire. okay. They had the Unicron. That's not the Unicron. That's a no. that's a custom that someone made to oh, it's look. A custom. Yeah, someone okay. made it to look like the eighty six. Uh, I know what it was. Yeah, it's um, a good centerpiece. Was wild. Yeah. Well, and they also had, didn't they have a, a G2 Minosaur and, yeah, yeah. Um, and Defensor? Defensor. And you could buy the individuals, and they had the Gen 2 uh, watches, which were ridiculously hard to find. And yeah. yeah. We know someone who bought one of those. We know yeah, someone we who bought one of those, yep. Yeah. So did, did, the, did the breakdowns fly? Or they're gone. They, yeah, they were, they were gone. They were not gone, gone. They're, I think there were like four left, but they, were, they sat there and sat there and sat there, and all of a sudden, boom, a bunch of people did a run on them. Wow. Wow. So. And some of them I have card defects it. and things. You know, I have mine. I've had it forever. But it's having another one to open and play with would not be <laughs> outside my realm of um, illness. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think what else. Of, you know, what other things do we see that were on the dealer room floor that were just crazy? You saw just how giant that giant-ass scorn is. The, the oh. amount of toddler sized toys these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was surprised to see that many of them. Yeah, I feel like, you know, in third party, a lot of the things just keep getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And now we have that four max that, you know, so the third party panel I felt like in general was pretty boring. There wasn't a lot of new stuff. There was a few by some new companies that were neat at the very beginning, but a lot of the, you know, regular companies kind of were showing off you know, things that we've seen at TFCon LA. And of course, like the, the TFCon shows now that there's been three this last year, you know, you're really not going to see a lot of new stuff at every, a lot of you know, repeat, yeah, yeah. repeat really, uh, yeah. announcements or whatever. There were some interesting omissions, like Zeta didn't have anything to show off. Mm -hmm. Make Toys had nothing to show off. No X Transbots either. Yeah. Uh, X Transbots showed off their, uh, their, uh, Menasaur. Did they? Yeah. The yeah. Gen the Gen yeah. 2. Cool. I just yeah. blacked out. We looked at it together. <laughs> Uh, it's in the showroom. I didn't know it was in the panel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Whatever. I feel like on the slides, I mean, now a lot of companies are just really uh, not showing things off like well in advance other than Fans Toys is, but most of the other ones aren't. I feel like the more interesting thing is, is coming to see some of the test shots that people yeah. have. Yeah. Like MMC had a good presence here. That Chrome Dome yeah, looks dome is incredible. Yeah. I, I want it so much. Uh, I was excited about that because I didn't know it was coming. I had no mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. 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 Oh. Well, RC. Yeah, okay. Anna and I fell in love with an RC, yep. the concept one. Yeah, that is yeah. super weird paint job RC. I'm so excited for that. Ooh, it's so hideous and wonderful. I need to get a campaign started off the ground, all you listeners. The rap bat that's exclusive here this weekend, I don't like those colors. I want Senator Wing Thing. Please help me make that happen. Oh. So there Senator you go. Wing Thing. Campaign a giant of one. orange figure <laughs> with a great. No, it is two. We, we can have two. Okay. Are, are you going to start like a... <laughs> Congressman Wing thing. Yeah. I like that. That's bad. I, I, I want to see that on... Mayor, like, mayor. <laughs> on, uh, go out to like change.org or whatever, you know. Put up a, I'll do it. A, do uh, it. I don't know. I'll do it. I think <laughs> mayor. Wing thing so, mayor. Because I bet you could get people if you just say Senator Wing thing or whatever that people have no idea even Transformers are just voting for it. Sure. Yeah. That, that sounds, sounds great. Yeah. I like wings. So, wings. <laughs> like I like orange wings. So, be great. Um, Congressman Wink thing. But we'll, we'll come up with a better name. President oh, elect. No. President elect <laughs> Wink thing. Oh, that makes sense on interesting levels. But yeah, I was going to say at the very end of the third party panel, the uh, fan story showed off a, what is it, three and a half foot tall. It's 42, 42 inches. 42 yeah. inch Fort Max. I mean, okay, this is the moment we went too far, right? <laughs> nope, 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 no, nope. Okay. Nope. So this is the thing I'm trying to figure He's out in charge. is, is <laughs> all, all of these retailers, I'm really curious if they're going to have to put an addendum on their, you know, if it's over $150 that it's free shipping. Because, like, you yeah. know this thing is going to be full of die cast. You know, they may deplete all the die cast reserves just for this toy. <laughs> Um, because like, it's, it's going to be ridiculous. Um, you know, like what the, uh, the Unicron is 19 pounds 
And that thing, I know it seems like logistically Hasbro's having issues with shipping that, but they had to limit where they could ship it because it's so big. Mm -hmm. This thing is going to be like twice as big. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, are they going to ship it in pieces like the Omega Supreme or something? Like, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I mean, mean, it feels like it. Get... They said the head would be separate. Yeah, the head's so... going to be a separate head because it's, it's 40 <laughs> is the entire thing, and then 40A was the Cerebros module. So, oh, okay. with, with the Master Sword and, and, and Spike or whatever, but A through Z. 26 parts. Oh my goodness. I, I just, I'm putting it on record. Yeah. We I mean, went too far. This is, this is, a, there's no going back from here. I'm We're wondering Transformers fans. Cog. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you get really vague IKEA instructions on how to put the thing together, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Kind of I wonder with it being that big, how many they're actually going to make. Like, how limited right. it will actually end up being. A bunch of crazy people are going to buy it. The pre-orders right, right. on that thing are going to blow Unicron out of the water. I know mm. I'm probably going to get I actually, I know I'm going to get at least one. I kind of desire it. Like, I saw it. I was like, ooh, that's like the right size to me because yeah, my other one's too small. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, and that's the thing for me is, is like that Unicron piece is it's so big that I can't fit that in my regular display cases, right? So if it's going to be that big, I just want a giant, yeah. you know? I, I would have liked the Unicron to be bigger. But yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. No, I would have loved the Unicron to be the size that this is. Like, just, if they would have gotten a three, yeah. ha three and a half foot tall Unicron, yep. oh, I think that, that probably would have been perfect for Unicron me. Unicron should mm. tower over four max. But Maybe that's what happened tower. to Max. Maybe right. next year they announce a six foot Unicron. Hey oh no! Oh no! <laughs> but but don't, I mean, you have all of don't these... call that into being. All of these <laughs> <weird. laughs> Someone's going to make a subdivision of Metroplex houses, and you can live in one. <laughs> right. Right. Fans toys house. All it together. The right. Metroplex. It's toys right. house. <laughs> yeah, when we say it's going to be a playset, it Maybe will literally can... be a playset. Like yeah. you can go, you know, your children can go oh, inside. Like that. it'll have like plumbing. House. Have you seen that? <laughs> there was there was a convention in Hong Kong, I think it was, and they built a Fortress Maximus yes. with slides, like ramp slides, oh, that yeah. was oh. inside it. It was. I want that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's how they should that's how they should dress up the entrance to the dealer. That's really the they should room. do something like that. <laughs> that would be fun. They took up like that a whole fun. quarter of that convention space or something. It was huge. But there are so many kids, and that's one thing I like about the show, is there are kids, little kids, you know medium ten kids. ten year olds. Yeah, little kids, medium kids, large kids. I'm a large kid. <laughs> and it's like they're all like all you see families here and the atmosphere is great. I used to come to shows just for the toys, you know, when I was younger or whatever but now i'm coming and i'm here to see you guys i'm here to see all my transformers friends and it's it's a lot of fun and it, it just gets better every year i, I really yeah it's great someone stop me yeah no i mean i think <laughs> that's a great thing about tfcon is is that there's something for everyone mm -hmm. and so that for the people that really want to go to the panels they've got that the people mm -hmm. that want to do the vendor room they've got that but then you know for those of us that you know, we've done that, been there, done that. You know, we're here to see friends, and we're still doing those things, just not what, you know, at the level that we did, you know, when we first started going. Yeah. Right. I heard someone, overheard someone, or was talking to someone that had was a veteran, a BotCon veteran, and mm -hmm. he said this felt a lot like pre-Fun Pub BotCon. And I know it might have been you. It was me. It was you, because <laughs> I'd never been to him, and I was just like, oh, yeah, so this is, okay, interesting. This feels like 3H era BotCon right now and it's it's fantastic we've got great guests the atmosphere is wonderful you don't have and i'm not saying this in a mean way but you don't have like hasbro like hasbroing at you like, yeah Arr. that's true um that sounds mean well i mean that's the thing that's tough and the decision you have to make with some of these conventions is is like do you know do you want it to be official or not um but there's a lot of things that go along with it if you're you know if it's going to be official Mm -hmm. uh, that you have to abide by the rules and, mm -hmm. and all that. And, of course, now, like, FunPub no longer has that license. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who knows what Hasbro is going to end up doing, you know, here uh, in, the, in the future. So I hope that they have an official one because I think that would be really neat, too. But not but, HasCon. Yeah. Let's be clear, not HasCon. HasCon yes, yeah. It's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. That was great. I think if they well, can... I, I guess I like TFCon more when they're what? It's an alternative to the official thing. Now it's the only thing... Just it's just it's a little different. Yeah, you know? yeah. Nuance. Right. It's still good. Right, right. I, I miss the botcon still. Yeah, I don't know. I never went to botcon, so I, I don't even I know what the I miss. Good old days so. of botcon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started going in two thousand nine, so it was still fun pub days. But at least then they weren't terrible. Yeah, I'm a late nineties con yeah. veteran, so yeah, it's uh it's changed a lot. Um, 
but like with the, with the exclusives and stuff with BotCon, you know, I want all the exclusives. I want the attendee Stay figure. There. I want uh -huh. everything. Uh -huh. Here, uh -huh. that stress level is uh -huh. just not there. There might be really cool exclusives, and we had some this year. Uh -huh. We had some really great exclusives, but I, I didn't have that that press that feel like I need to get all of these and like hold them. I could just I like You're that one. I like that one. You're right. There was a mm -hmm. there was a stress thing that happened, and I totally had forgot about that. <laughs> that that part wasn't so great. The yeah. stressful thing happened. Just when you get there and you're like, I need to get all the toys, and they're oh, hard to get, and they all yeah. have rules, and there's they're limited. Really well, they kind of did that. that. Made them hard to get. Yeah. yeah. As I, I say, the exclusives this year all sold out within like pretty quickly. Other than yeah. the uh, the G two uh, whatever Sphinx. Yeah. The, yeah. the watermelon sphinx. So mm -hmm. I think all of them did. Now the nice thing the MMC does is is that um, they offer them to non attendees as well through the Planet Steel Express. But the crazy thing was is usually those go up like two weeks after the show. This year they put them up like last Saturday. night, last night. Uh, yeah. like at like midnight. Didn't they know we were partying in Amber's right. room? Because we were busy. <laughs> right. Exactly. Can't do that. So I don't I mean, know. I wish that they would do it with a little more announcement, like so that you would know that they went up. So yeah. no, are those already sold out online? Is that why we're? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't okay. checked. Them, yeah. No idea. Yeah. I was. Right. I wanted the bolt cage. I was stood in line for like twenty minutes. I was right behind you. Yeah. yeah. And by the time we got there, I was like, okay, never mind. Yeah, they sold out like five or six people ahead of us. Just whoop. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that that's the thing that is a little bit frustrating because I understand that you don't want to have all of them here so mm -hmm. that people, you know, because they've had issues in the past of people buying them and reselling them in a markup. You don't want that. But at the same time, if I'm coming to a convention, I have my heart set on, you know, a certain exclusive, I can't get it. But then, you know, it turns out that while I'm enjoying myself with my friends, that somebody else that was yeah. sitting at home you know, manage to get it. I, I'd be a little frustrated. So I'm sure that they probably are trying something out new. I'm sure that, you know, they'll probably hear feedback from people and may adjust. But Maybe. I don't know. I mean, when you sell out, you don't care how you sold out. You're happy. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's true. People complain and it's like, you, know, you don't have to worry about it because you've sold them all. From, right. from a retailer perspective. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 exactly. But, I mean, I still feel like some of those guys, they're like, if you sell out, you're like, oh, we could have just made a hundred more. Like, that's, yeah, it's hard to hit it just right. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. No, that, that's the hardest thing, and I know we've talked about before, it's, it's like for a convention, like just doing something that is in a certain, you know, order, like t-shirts, for example. Like, yeah. if you're not pre-ordering t-shirts, trying to make sure that you have the right sizes and all that, it's just a logistical nightmare. It's um, still available for free. Oh, there you go. Good. Okay, cool. Well, what, what else about the con? Did you guys go to any panels? I did. So what was your favorite <laughs> panel you went to, Peter? Well, I mean, uh, the third-party panel is always a hit because you're going to see what still needs to come out and, and as well as things that are newly announced, and that's always fun. But I went to the uh, uh, Dan and Paul's panel mm -hmm. and got to talk to them and yeah, just fun stories and, and fun interactions with all of us. It's so Dan and Paul's panel was uh, Dan Gilbazan, who's the voice of Bumblebee, uh, G1 Bumblebee, and Paul Eiding, who is the voice of Perceptor. Right. Um, and they are wonderful. Like, I would highly recommend if you can ever go to, you know, see a show with them. They have fantastic stories. And they are two of the nicest voice actors that, you know, you'll ever meet. Um, you know, friends of the show. And, you know, they are just great people. So, um, so yeah. No, that's, that's great. Any other panels you guys hit? Uh, I was heading the cosplay panel. That's How, the only that? one I really cared about. Um, it, was, it went off really well. Um, we didn't have a PowerPoint or anything, so we ended up doing a big Q&A session, which is a lot of fun because there's a lot of different ways that you can go about making rigs and making costumes and things like that. That it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to kind of have this hive mind of just knowledge within our community. So, and there are resources all over the place. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun to just get to sit and talk and just tell about the different techniques that we had and 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 just kind of I guess share our knowledge at that point. So like how many how many people cosplayed at this event do you think? If you could uh, upwards of went more than 30. Wow. Um, the cosplay contest had a cap of 30 and we met it. And I know that there were more out than that and there were some that didn't enter in and some that couldn't so it's we had five six full rigs um, this weekend. Um, and then most of it was human formers, and I'd have a rig here if I didn't fly. 
flying with them is a nightmare. Uh, rig? Rig, giant robot costume, full armor, all the way oh. head to toe. That's a rig. So, and then human former would be this. That's See, a new vocabulary yeah, for me. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I like doing it, and I like we like sharing our knowledge, and it's just it's just again it becomes this hive mind of just creativity when we do things like that, and we just sit down and we just talk yeah. about different techniques and things like that. So that was a lot of fun. I didn't really get a chance to hit any other panels. I've been running around doing God knows what else. <laughs> It'd be cool, like if at one of these you guys all organize, like we're all being a headmaster, but you all pick your own <laughs> headmaster. Everyone's kind of got the similar costume at the same time. That would be that would be pretty hard, wild. Man. We've we've done that before. I mean, like this uh, San Diego Comic Con 2008. We actually did. That was the animated year. Oh. So we had like ten people that were in animated costumes, cool. which was really cool. Like to to get like the cast together and 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 to get everybody you know going for different pictures and things like that. Like, that was a lot of fun. And then I mean, I have a trine, so I have Skywarp or a uh, Star Scream and Thundercracker downstairs. So, like, I have the three. It's a little, it's easier to organize when it's two or three people as opposed to, like, a whole group. Yeah. It's a little more difficult than that. Especially yeah. when it comes to rigs, because rigs can take anywhere between three and eight months to make. I was going to say, two or three people versus ten people is, is harder for dinner, too. I know what these things. <laughs> we, we, last night, we tried to uh, call some places around the area for dinner, and they're just like, no, like, you know, because we had too many people. So we just ordered a huge stack of uh, Domino's and had it delivered to the hotel. So yeah, that's the way to do it. It worked. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, another panel that we did, Christian and I did, was uh, they had an Aaron Archer panel. So we kind of simulated the uh, toy design and production, I guess, kind of like going through that whole thing and all the logistical issues that you might have and some of those kind of things and stories that have been wrong uh, from that. So that was a limited group. I think it was about 30, 30 people. people, I think. Um, so there was an additional uh, cost to that um, with it too. But I don't know. Would you say that it was worth the money to, to do? I think so. A lot of good insider information. A lot of, I, I like knowing what goes on behind the scenes and now I know a little bit more of that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always interested in that kind of stuff because, you know, being... You know, I'm in uh, finance as well, and it's just kind of interesting hearing some of those insider stories and, like, why they do what they do. Can you paraphrase any of, like, the details just quick? Of, like, what, how the progress yeah, the process so works? It, what it ends up being is that there's a lot of internal and external factors that can get thrown at you at any time that could mess with the development of any toy line. No matter how good it is, if it's a licensed property, if it's an original property, it, uh, it's a long journey to get from concept to the shelf. I think one of my favorite stories about it is, you know, just kind of thinking about the licensing that you have to go through. Um, and, and so not just the licensing for a movie property, but if they're making them based on the likeness of the actor or actress, that you have to get their permission as well. Mm -hmm. And so wait, the way the sculpt is and, and whatever, and they have to sign off on that type of thing. And so uh, he had told a story between, I think, two different uh, uh, movie properties that they were producing at the, the same time, and that there were uh, two actresses that were involved with these uh, competing movies, and they wanted to have the cooler toy themselves, because it's like a competition between these two actresses, right? And so the one actress, I guess, was being so difficult with it that Hasbro finally said, you know what? We're just not going to make your toy. So they like just cut that toy from the line because of wow. the because the of the actress. So oh, I thought that was you know. So that's kind of some of the things. And, and they were saying that you know sometimes when you get a sculpt that is generic and not based on the actor, that way they don't have to worry about getting sign off from the actor actor yeah. because it's just another layer of of complexity and, and all that type of thing too. Yep. And another layer that you have to pay royalties to and, and all that type of thing. And, you know, so I, I thought it was, it was definitely an interesting thing. Um, I know I'm sure we've both seen Aaron Archer at shows yeah, sure. multiple times. So I thought this was an interesting, something that was different. Yeah. My fun tidbit from that was that we found out, especially with licensed stuff that you'll often, or they will often get, concept art of characters that they're saying are going to be big and it won't appear in the movies. Uh, Lucasfilm is apparently a big uh, 
company that would do that. For episode one, they said Rick Oley, who's a random pod racer, was like the, the new Han Solo. And so Hasbro made a bunch of toys for him and it didn't matter. Uh, they did it recently with uh, Constable Zubio from Last Jedi or Force Awakens, whatever he was. You know, all the shell forming characters. Yeah. They just say, hey, they're going to be big. Put them in the first wave. And then they're not in the movie. Oh, Good stuff. That's annoying. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think what else. Is there anything else that we haven't touched on that was fun? Favorite thing from the show? Hanging out with friends. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Wow, so, that. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I've been to a lot of these, but I've never experienced your room. <laughs> like I did last night. I was like, what is this? You're welcome. That was not my party. I was just bartending. Yeah. I was just there. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm glad you enjoyed what you had. Though. Oh, I did. I met a bunch of people I'd never met in there, there before, and that was super cool. No, and I think that that's great. Like, you know, a lot of these podcasters that we all listen to, too, they're, they're all roaming around, and you can go and talk to all of them, or like YouTubers, like I know Bolt Matrix was here uh, yesterday, uh, and, you know, just the actors themselves, you know, just kind of seeing everybody and being able to tell them, like, you know, that how much you enjoy them or be able to actually have a, an interaction. And then also the the various people that you interact with online through social media, you know, that you can actually, you know, put a face to a name and, and all that and be able to actually meet these people. It's, it's great. And I would, I would highly recommend it that, you know, cause it, it kind of cures your issues where that, you know, sometimes there's a lot of negativity, but when you go here, you kind of get your batteries recharged a little bit, yeah. um, you know, just meeting cause yeah, it's a lot more positive of, of, of an experience. And speaking of meeting people, special shout out to Sportimus. Thanks for coming to meet all of us. We like you a lot. Yeah, yeah I really Sportimus. appreciate all the positive feedback. That was really, it was really great. I like hearing positive feedback. It's been really cool to meet the rest of the cast because I had never seen almost any of you in person before. <laughs> it was like Lucas and Sean. That was it. So it's nice to see everybody. It's super cool. All right. Well, any other final thoughts you guys want to throw out there before we wrap up? Attend the next TFCon. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yep, we'll see yeah, you there. yeah, come see us. Eight oh wait. They should be announcing it here <laughs> shortly, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah today. Right. Any minute now. So, yep. Exciting. All right. Anyone else? See you next week. All right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We'll see you. Hopefully, we'll get a uh, microcasters in here too at some point. Right. Oh, we'll see you Tuesday. So, anyway. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, thanks everyone, and we will see you later. See we'll, you. Yeah, we'll we'll have a two hour long ouch my wallet later on the, this week, right? Very oh, ouch. Boy. Very wallet. Ouch my weekend. Right? Ouch my ouch weekend. My weekend. <laughs> That's yeah. the marathon. The miniseries. <laughs>